And uh, now that we are past smook, Smooky. Smooky. And welcome to another episode of Cheap Smut. My name is Katie Mizell. And my name is Carl Mizell. And this is a podcast about inexpensive smutty books. I don't know why I'm explaining that to you again. <laughs> it's the 35th episode. I yeah. feel like we've... It's 35, yeah. I, yeah. I feel like we should Plus know by two now. two author interviews. Yeah, so 37 yeah. in a row. You should know what we're about by now. Yeah. How yeah. are you? I'm okay. Yeah, right? Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. I got... I mean, you, you had a you had a peek behind the curtain. I had a great day yesterday, but I got <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> you were such a party degenerate yesterday. So I we was. we were at a <laughs> wedding. I officiated the wedding for uh, my cousin slash one of my best friends, Mike, and his beautiful bride Rhonda. So congratulations to the congratulations. two of you. Congratulations. Um, but you got started early. It was a day. Yes. It was a daytime wedding. You got started early with all kinds of fun substances mm. and uh, all it was, kinds of yeah. fun. The, the ones that are legal for me to have in my state yeah. are the ones that I was using. Uh, yeah, I don't want to make it sound like you were tripping on psilocybin. Yeah, or whatever. yeah, it's not like um, I'm fucking dropping acid and shit. No, but uh, so yeah, so you got uh, a little day drunk, a little yep. day high. Yep. Uh, we had a great time at the wedding and got to have a nice quiet night at home without the kids. Uh, which was nice, thanks to our mother, or your mother, my mother-in-law. Mm-hmm. And then today it was just a lot of me trying to uh, unsuccessfully fix our washing machine. I, I thought I had it. Yeah, you did. You did a good job of the thing you right. thought was going to be the solution. Exactly. It wasn't the solution, but you still did a good job. I did. Yes. Thank you very much. I I took apart a washing machine and put it all back together, the way it was supposed to. So yeah. So I was I was pretty proud of that. And and now our lazy Susan is broke. <laughs> it's just just the door. <laughs> yeah, just, just the, the door, door just the door. Susan. But uh, home ownership, boy, I tell oh, you, God. boy, howdy. Every day there's something new, especially in this house because this house is like a DIY nightmare. Yeah. It it seriously. Every time we like try to do something, we just find an, another bit of proof that the guy who owned the place before us thought he could save a buck. Yeah. And I'm sure he did save a buck. But he made it my problem. Yeah, but now it's our problem. So it's just uh, a parade of of fix it things. But that's okay. Yep. It's a it's a good problem to have uh, as long as it doesn't get too expensive to 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 get to the fixing. But that's my problem, listener. It's mm-hmm. not your problem, <laughs> um, and I don't want to make it your problem. It's not what I'm here for. What I'm here for is to react and respond in real time to the inexpensive smutty novels that my wife regales me with. Yes. Now that we are past spooky smuttober, mm-hmm. we are going into uh, the holidays. Yeah, basically. The horny holidays. The horny holidays. I love that. Thank you. We're and rolling into November. Yep. And uh, we're kicking it off right. Yes, we're, we are. So, so what do we have on the uh, the agenda today? Unless you have anything else, any housekeeping to get out uh, of the way at the top of the episode. I don't think so. I think I'm good. All right. Well, All right. then let's I mean, just barrel on into this thing. Listeners may notice that I am still slightly getting over laryngitis. I had full blown. Yeah. I couldn't. Like I sounded like I got kicked in the throat laryngitis. And now I just have vocal fry, which people love to make fun of. But who gives a fuck? I have vocal fry. Enjoy. Mm, it's not your fault. It's not my fault. But I do have vocal fry even when I don't have laryngitis. <laughs> it's just a thing. Anyway. Uh, I've, so, got, I've got whiskey. Mmm, yummy. Yes, this is, is this my, the new whiskey that you got? This is the whiskey that I was given as a gift for officiating the wedding. It's uh, Glendala Irish whiskey. I'm a huge fan. It's named after the uh, the Abbey, I believe, that was uh, founded by Saint Kevin, as Saint we did Kevin. some some the uh, patron saint of blackbirds. Yes, as we learned today. Um, it's an Irish whiskey. It's very smooth. It's double aged in some whiskey barrels and then in some sherry barrels, and I love it to death. And uh, quite frankly, I burned it. Yes, you have. Not that you need to earn it, but... No, but you have earned it today. I I have earned it today. It's a big Mm -hmm. day. So, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. So, this week, we are reading Frostbitten, a steamy Jack Frost reimagining by Violet Taylor. This book was recommended to me by one of our dedicated, lovely, beautiful listeners, Katie, Mm -hmm. who wanted me to read... Oh, hi, Katie. Hey, Katie. Love you. Uh, who wanted me to read anything by Violet Taylor. And she specifically recommended 
Violet Taylor during Spooky Smuttober because most of the books in the series that this book is in are Halloween themed. Mm -hmm. But the Halloween docket was already full. And then I saw this one, Jack Frost reimagining. Well, it's November. We live in Michigan. It already snowed once already. <laughs> yeah, it snowed on Halloween. Yeah, yeah, it did. So it's perfect. Let's let's usher in the cold weather with a Jack Frost retelling. Yes, let's. Yes, let's. So this book is available for $2.99. It is not available through Kindle Unlimited, and nothing in this series is. It is part of the darkly depraved romance series. Six novellas that range from like 135 pages down to like 45 pages, and there's something for everybody in there. Again, they are mostly Halloween-themed, but there's some other stuff too. There's one with like a spider, spider guy. There's one that's like... Hey, no thank you. Yeah, <laughs> there's one that's like... I can't remember the real name, but it, it's basically like fucked by a scarecrow. Like, <laughs> it sounds great. At least every single one of these, I was like, I could have picked any one of these and had a great time. You know? Oh, this book is sixty-five pages, but I didn't, I didn't mention that. But this one is sixty-five pages, okay. so it's sort of like right in the middle of all of that. Also, I wanted to just make, I just wanted to take a quick minute to talk about how cool Violet Taylor's website is. <laughs> so Violet Taylor also owns a candles and crystal shop, like a like a woo woo millennial girl shop. So you know. I'm going to love it, right? And she has candles that are inspired by each of her books. And I was like, ah, oh, man, the, the, the frostbitten candles are unfortunately sold out because I wanted one. The, they smell like whatever the MMC in the book smells like. Okay. <laughs> so this, uh, the, the Jack Frost candle smelled like peppermint and earth because that's what... The MMC smells like. Yeah. And they each come with a little crystal. And the Jack Frost candle came with a little crystal dick. And that's really funny. <laughs> well, like, after. Like a tiny crystal dick. You could also, on her website, buy like a six inch crystal dick for like 150 bucks. Don't fuck it, though. Please don't uh, fuck that. Uh, don't do that. I mean, I, I'm not going to tell yeah, you not to I'm fuck no it. I'm no geologist, but I feel like you shouldn't stick a big crystal dick up your <laughs> I mean, it, 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 any part of you, really. I've heard it can really throw off your chakras. Oh, if you do God. That. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's just ruin your sh your chakra alignment. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to do that. Tiger's eye cock. That's really oh. bad for you. That's really bad for your energy. <laughs> Actually, maybe it wouldn't be tiger's eyes. They're supposed to be lucky. Maybe it'll get, <laughs> make your pussy lucky say, or your booty, depending on where you're putting it. Yeah, I mean, wherever you put it. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers <luck>. to you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So shall we get into our content warnings? Oh, God, yes. Okay. Not many for this week. Content warnings for dubious consent. Sort of. I, I didn't interpret it really as dubious consent, but it's in there. Um, restraints. Spanking. And brief descriptions of physical trauma and injury. Not caused by a person. Caused by like a natural disaster. Okay. And let's begin. Our MMC this week, his name is Jack. He is the captain of a mountain search and rescue team in Colorado, like a ski patrol. Okay. Um, he and his team are called in to rescue four teens who are trapped in Oslan's Pass, but it's often called Dyatlov's Pass because of its similarities to the, the Dyatlov Pass. Do you know anything about the Dyatlov Pass no. disaster? Okay. So in like the 50s, I want to say... I want to say it was in Russia, but it's some, somewhere in Eastern Europe in mm -hmm. the mountains. Like six hikers were discovered outside of their tent, stripped completely naked <gasps> with. Oh, yeah. yeah with, and there was a photo. Yeah. And yeah. They, they were like they, they were their bodies were broken and they had like facial injuries. Like one of them was like missing an eye and yeah. one of them was missing their tongue or something. And people have been trying to figure out what happened for years. Yeah. But is that the there. one where there was like a photo from the campsite yes, of like yeah. the, the last known person at the site or whatever is, yeah okay i have something in the same one yeah so i am familiar with that. i didn't yeah. realize that was yeah. the same name that's um so that's the diet Loft's pass debacle uh it's a mystery that no one has ever been able to solve but oslin's pass this fictional pass in this book has a similar situation it ha they have missing hikers unexplained deaths mutilated bodies and people who come back from the past sometimes report a voice on the wind encouraging them to either hurt or kill themselves yeah. yeah, it's quite creepy. Teens go there 
like on dares to mm-hmm. be brave and stupid. And now four of them are stuck up there. They went up when it was still light. And now that it's gotten dark and cold, everything's frozen and they can't get back down. The entire team, including a golden retriever named Teddy, are going up. They're all they're all scared about it, but they're going anyway. Jack is incredibly nervous about it, but he has to go and he's in charge. Yeah. He's the leader and he's a good leader. So he's they so they go. When they get to Oslin's Pass, they immediately find one 13-year-old girl who's, like, blue-lipped and shaking. And she leads them to an ice cave where the rest of the teens have fallen in. One of them has a broken leg. So Jack, like, puts on his repeller harness thing and repels down into the cave. They get all of the teens out of the cave. And all of the teens are terrified, saying that there's something in there with them, that they've been hearing a voice. Mm -hmm. So he hears the voice, too. And he goes to investigate to make sure there isn't somebody else trapped inside the cave. But when he gets what what he finds is just like a wall, like an ice wall. But it's sort of shimmery and like vibrating. Mm. And it's sort of magic, I guess, or something. He almost touches that wall. But then he stops himself like out of self-preservation. He feels like there's something wrong and he leaves. Because as those kids found out, (laughs) bravery and stupidity are two sides of the same coin. Yes. Yes, they are. So he leaves. They finish up. Everything's good. They have saved the day and they leave at the end of their shift. He goes to a bar called the Ice House in town where he sees our FMC. Her name is Mara and she has curly blonde hair and blue eyes and she is thick. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, Jack is also like dark hair, dark eyed, strong jawed book boyfriend. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, obviously. Obviously. Unless unless otherwise noted, unless unless he's a monster or an alien of some sort, or unless he is described uh, as having like other physical. Bod. Yeah, dad bod or other physical features. Yep. I assume. Yeah, you just assume that they're standard good looking. Book, yeah. Book boyfriends. Yeah. Yeah. So Mara is working her shift at the ice house. It's a slow night, mostly regulars. The weather's not great, so people aren't coming in. She's bored, and she is dreading the end of her shift because she lives right above the bar, and she's just, like, kind of feels like it's sort of sad to just, like, go home from your job up the stairs to your home where you're alone. I disagree. I think that's that's I think that's great. I was upset. When I was a kid, I loved the show Cheers. Uh, and I loved the idea of like owning a bar and then like living, just you know, getting up, going going to work, cleaning the bar, then you know, just either going upstairs or in in the back. Yeah. Although I don't know, I don't remember if Sam actually lived at the bar, but I I just love the idea of like I never really watched Cheers having but... an apartment above the bar. Yeah. So I disagree in, with Mara. I just I disagree with her too. In um in the Half Moon Hollow books, mm-hmm. the first couple of books when Gilbert is still alive, the old bookshop owner Gilbert Wainwright, yep. he lives in an apartment above the bookshop. Yes. I think that's amazing. It's fantastic. Especially if you're like an like an 80-year-old man like Gilbert. If I was like an 80, if I was an 80-year-old single woman who owned a bookshop, I would just totter down my stairs every day and like just sell books and then go back up my stairs and drink tea. Sounds amazing. Yeah. Sounds amazing so Mara's sitting at the bar and she's talking to a a co-worker about how like bored she is with her life and then the doors swing open and in walks the ski patrol successful rescue accomplished and they're here for drinks and she sees Jack and she's instantly excited because she and Jack are sleeping together there's a pre-established relationship pre-narrative wow I can't recall this happening on the show yeah I don't think I've ever read a book like that before. Wow. I don't really know that I have unless it's a a second chance romance. Unless it's a second chance romance. I don't think I've ever read a book where the where the uh, main characters are already sleeping together. Yeah. This is completely foreign to me. It is. (laughs) To me, too. I was like, whoa, holy. That's great. I don't even know if we should continue. Oh, (laughs) Well, we're going to continue. Oh, okay, good. We're going to continue. So she pours the first round. She exchanges glances with Jack, thinking about she's thinking about their relationship. So that she establishes for the reader that they are sleeping together, but they're just friends with benefits. They both have commi- commitment issues, and so it, it's like a perfect. So she's she's like, it's perfect. It's great. We yeah. we have sex, and we don't have to deal with our issues or our feelings, and that's the end of that. Nothing wrong with Absolutely that. Absolutely nothing so wrong with that. So long as everybody's on the same page. Yeah, as long as you're cool and he's cool or she's cool or whoever's cool, they're all cool. 
yes, live your life. So once the bar calms down, she asks the server to handle the bar so that she can go home. Mm -hmm. So she clocks out. She expects Jack to follow her up immediately, but he doesn't. So she takes a quick shower. And then when she gets out of the shower, he's sitting on her couch waiting for her. And he's all like, Should, shouldn't you lock your door at night? And she's like, well, I was expecting you to come here. <laughs> what? Yeah, next time I will. Yeah, sure. Next time I'll lock my door and you won't get laid. <laughs> Thanks, Captain. They fall immediately into sex. And it's like this needy and familiar and desperate. Jack is probably working through his feelings about whatever the fuck happened to him in that cave. Mm -hmm. though, he, though Mara doesn't know that. And he's acting a little different differently than usual. So Mara, she, she, in her head, she's thinking like usually he's into like long periods of foreplay and he likes to draw it out and take his time. But not today. He rips the towel off. He put he picks her up and plops her on the counter and he just right in mm -hmm. just slams on home. It is incredibly intense, fast paced and rough. There's dirty talking. Something is very different about Jack. She's not complaining, mm -hmm. though. And then eventually she comes and then he comes and he comes inside of her, which is apparently also unusual. And then once they're all done, they go to bed. Mm -hmm. They go to bed in her bed. He's, she's like, you want to sleep here? Yep. OK, come on. In the middle of the night, Jack wakes up and he's still hearing the voice from the cave like in his head um, and it's driving him crazy. He can't sleep. So he decides he needs to go back to the cave immediately. <laughs> right now, three it's in the morning, the middle of the night. And it's an incredibly dangerous pass. Yeah. But sure. And you're 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 lying next to a, a thick blonde hottie. But yeah. But sure. Of course. Um, she wakes up and she argues that he shouldn't go or he should at least wait to go in the morning. But he says he's going right now. So she's like, OK, well, then I'm going with you. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't argue with her about that. So uh, he got two points for me right there. Two big points in the column of he didn't say, no, you can't. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. She's a grown up. She can make her own choices. She's going to the pass. She's going to the horrible haunted murder pass. Is it, that, that, this is one area where I would disagree simply from the standpoint of like if it was dangerous enough for the kids to get trapped, like do you want it, it, But then again, I'm coming from a person who's played a lot of video games with a lot of escort missions and those are the <laughs> worst. So <laughs> I, I hear that and I'm like, oh God, no, I don't want anyone with another person yeah. stay here. I mean, I get that, but also, like, she, they, she lives in this town. She is an established, practiced hiker. Mm. She knows what she's doing. So you didn't say I that. I apologize. I did not. I did not explain that. But, yeah, she's good. All right, then I'm fine. So they gear up and they go. In the cave, they go to the ice wall, and he breaks through the ice wall with, like, a pickaxe or whatever. And they go inside to a, a secondary cave where they find, like, this eerie pool of blue water that is not frozen even though it's in the middle of a frozen cave i thought you were gonna say they found an even smaller cave and then they broke into that one <laughs> they found an even smaller oh it was a maritrushka yeah, cave yeah it was yes. a maritrushka cave yeah. Yeah, exactly with a teeny tiny little baby cave inside right. <laughs> <laughs> there's like runes carved into the walls it's generally kind of like eerie and spooky jack's jack says he thinks it looks like a tomb mm -hmm. so they start looking around the cave and then they hear this horrible shuddering crack and uh like the sound of like thunder and the cave starts shaking oh and i know that sound yeah so there is an avalanche i don't know that sound <laughs> i'm just saying I, I know the sound that sound that ice makes yeah when uh, it really, breaks like yeah, that yeah they, <laughs> yeah it's, it's a terrifying sound yeah because i've been out there i don't yeah. like it yeah so there's an avalanche okay. and the cave is shaking and they realize they have to leave and they have to leave immediately. But before they can even start walking out, ice starts falling from the ceiling. It hits Mara and she falls into the pool mm -hmm. and she lands on her butt in a beautiful frozen forest. Hmm. I was expecting her to look up and see Mr. Tumnus, like the way it was described. Okay. It's a gorgeous, frozen over, beautiful, perfect forest. She looks around and she sees oh it's also the middle of the day it's it was like three in the morning mm -hmm. but now it's the middle of the day she looks around and she sees a shadow coming towards her and she thinks it's a man but it's not it's not quite a man he is very tall slim but muscular swimmers bod style of course yeah um and beautiful he has two sets of arms he has four arms mm -hmm. why because six protruding ice crystals that come out of each shoulder 
he is incredibly pale with blue lips, crystal blue eyes, a flame of white hair, and a crown of icicles that grows out of his head. He has fangs, and he is dressed in nothing but a loincloth. Like a white piece mm. of fabric covers his dick. That's it. Just some muslin. Just, yep, something. I don't know. Um, and he walks right up to her. She looks at him. She is absolutely terrified. She gets bad vibes, and she runs. She turns around, and she runs in the other direction. She runs until he ju- until like a wall of ice just pops up in front of her and she runs right into it Rude. and falls on her ass. So this is Frost, our other MMC. He was not so Mara's arrival is a su- is surprising to him because he was expecting a man. He's just like a woman. <laughs> what? Uh, women don't go hiking and was, fall in pools. Was he expecting or hoping? He was hoping for a man. Oh, okay. Um, but not because he's, I actually, I don't know what his sexuality is. Not because he was okay. hoping to fuck the man. Gotcha. Uh, for different reasons. Okay. Um, she can't, oh, because a man would be able to help him escape. Okay. She cannot help him escape, but she is warm and beautiful. And he, when he chases her down, he carves a rune into her wrist to magically make her immune to the cold before he picks her up and carries her back to his home. He introduces himself. He says that he is an ice demon and the ruler of this domain. This domain is the kingdom of ice. Anyone who dies in the ice or the cold comes here. But she is not dead. Her body is still alive in the mortal world. She's just visiting. Okay. He dumps her on the bed and he immediately commands her to strip. And she tries to run away again. She jumps off of the bed, but the floor is made of ice. So she falls flat on her ass. Yeah, like you do. Because his entire castle is made of ice. And in my notes, I just wrote, okay, Elsa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I went to the Detroit Red Wings game on Thursday night. Yeah. And they always have like games in between the periods, and it's usually like peewee hockey teams. But sometimes they'll have people out there doing things like in their shoes. And they did this thing where they had lights, spots of light, and it was like musical chairs, oh. but pools of light. Oh, that's and fun. And you had to get there in time? You had to get there in time and try and stay in the circle. Sure. And, and naturally, sliding. there was uh, a lot of people falling on their asses. Oh, that sounds like fun to watch. It was hilarious. I'm but sure. That's what I imagine this was like. Probably. Yeah. But hornier. But w- well, well, yeah, I, I can't actually speak to how horny those people were on the ice. So yeah, maybe they were just as horny. Maybe, or maybe there's somebody in the audience that's like, "Oh God, how they know that my kink is watching people fall on a on a slippery surface on a 200 foot by 80 foot piece of ice." You know, they didn't know that. You just got really lucky. Right. Be my, grateful. It's my lucky day. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> he picks her back up. He puts her back on the bed. He uses one set of hands to hold her hands above her head, and then he manifests like an ice knife with his powers and just cuts her clothes off instead. Okay. Um, I don't like where this is going. I know, right? So this is where the mild, dubious consent stuff comes in. She's momentarily like, no, but he starts like dirty talking her, and then he ha- he opens her legs and he sees her vagina for the first time, and he makes a sound in his chest that has her like, never mind. <laughs> Apparently, whatever the noise is, it's like this rumbling crack. Mm-hmm. It's like his it's like his chest can make the sound of ice cracking mm-hmm. or ice like groaning or rumbling. And it just turns her on. So the dubious consent lasts for about nine seconds. <laughs> he says three or four really good phrases of dirty talk. And then she's like, take me. And so this is I, I feel like pointing out the casualness of the relationship with Jack. Ah, uh, yeah. Because I know you're not you don't do cheating. I do not do cheating. But if they're cash. Yeah, that's the thing. She's not cheating on anybody. True. Because she has an established, casual, sexual relationship with Jack. She can fuck whoever she wants. Right. And that's why I just wanted, because I was like, wait a sec. But you did point out. Yeah. Super cash. Super cash. It's not, this is not a cheating book. Because again, if it was cheating, I would have just set it down and walked away. Got it. This is not cheating. So he fingers her. Frost fingers her. She's officially seduced, like real damn quick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a 65-page 65 65 book. 65 pages. Mara's horny. Yeah. We don't have time to be worrying about, like, fucking modern morality. No. About sex. So he fingers her, and he pulls his hand away to lick his fingers, and the taste has him diving face first <laughs> right into her pussy to eat her out. Why didn't I just start there? He wasn't sure. Yeah, that's fair. He was like, eh, what's this about? A lick? 
more of that, please. Oh, well. Down I go, right in there. Um, so she, she, he goes until she comes, and then he immediately gets up to fuck her with his big dick. Of course. Uh, but there's no specific like dimensions mm. given. It's just when he first enters her, it hurts mm -hmm. until it doesn't hurt. Yeah. Okay. okay. Fair. It's that could be anything above like what seven inches yeah. could could potentially hurt you if you just slam it right in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. And then he <laughs> says to her a line that had me going like, "Bro, he says, have you ever wondered what it would be like to fuck a god?" <laughs> no, but I do now. <laughs> what? Okay. You better. Uh, I think my my first thought was like, well, he, 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 that would it would be really disappointing if it turned out the fucking god sucked, right? Like <laughs> the, this just the hubris. He's been fucking women for yep. a long time, and they were more scared of pissing off the yeah, god. Yeah, they were yeah. like, oh, it was the it best. Was so good. Oh <laughs> god, oh you, oh you. Uh, but then they get home and they're like, this ice god, right? Someone needs to. I'm not yeah. going to do it. I don't want him to like turn me into carbonite or some shit. Somebody needs to tell him. Yeah. I was like, you were wondered what it was like to fuck a god. Uh, no, I was in a relationship with Jeff, the god of biscuits, for a while. It was Deese. I'm not. <laughs> I don't. I know what it's like to fuck a god. Shout out to Eddie Izzard. Oh, classic shout out, Eddie. I love you. Great classic Joker. Hers. I love her so much. Anyway, they have this really rough, frenzied fuck um, before they both come. It is the possibly the best orgasm of Frost's existence. Maybe. Yep. He says it is. Uh -oh. Like, nothing has ever been this good in his entire life. And he is really into the fact that she's, like, warm. That's, mm. like, the big thing for him. He's cold. She's not. She's warm. He like spanks her and he loves how her her skin turns red. And like when he's done, he like licks the handprints because they're extra warm and stuff. Mm. It's very cute. And then he like senses that there's a problem somewhere in his realm and he has to go. So he makes ice chains and chains her to the bed and leaves. She doesn't like that. So she uh, manages to escape by like partially melting the shackles around her wrists, pulling her hands free. She wraps herself up with one of the many furs that are in this place. Convenient. Yep. And uh, she wanders off into the woods to try and find her way back to the pool to go home. Every time she sees a dead soul wandering through the forest, because that's what happens, the dead they just wander around for the rest of eternity. If you die in the snow, you just wander around there. Uh, she moves in a different direction because she doesn't want to get too close to them until eventually she gets to this like a white rapids raging river with a bunch of people in it. And every time one of them surfaces, they scream for help. So she reaches for a woman to like pull the woman out. But as soon as the woman gets a hold of her hand, she yanks her into the river with her. <laughs> oh, and again, um, two sides of the same coin. Seriously. And even though she has been made magically immune to the cold, she is not immune to the cold of this river. And she immediately starts to freeze and sink. But Frost pulls her out and helps her recover before he carries her back into the castle again. He explains that the wandering dead are warm and at peace. They feel no pain. They don't feel anything at all. But the people in the river are the bad guys and their punishment is eternally drowning in a frozen river <sighs> yeah boy if if there was ever a reason to just be a good person yeah that's it that's it right there yeah i don't want to spend eternally dr eternity drowning in a frozen river no I, I, sounds I, awful. i'm what i'm about to say I, I i was gonna say i don't have a lot of fears and i'm not saying like oh, i'm not afraid of anything i don't generally have like people have a variety of different fears i mean i we talked to gwendolyn i have wicked trypophobia yep. that sort of thing yep. uh but in terms of like death or dying very few like things that scare me but drowning that it mm, yeah no i don't yeah. want to go that way yeah <laughs> i get that i mean i would prefer not to die in something like bloody and horrific but mostly i just fear death because nobody knows what's on the other side of it and i don't like unexplainable things no i don't like when i don't know what's coming no i but, may or may not have control problems but just the idea of just feeling like this vast ocean or this vast body of water around you yeah just like the massiveness of what is killing you mm -hmm. and the darkness and mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And now you have to deal with it, listener. Yep. So let's move Enjoy. on. Enjoy. I heard that the that water in your lungs hurts really bad too. So <laughs> no thanks. No thanks. So let's go back to our story yeah. where people are going to get laid instead. Yes. Yes. Yes, let's. So Mara's punishment for trying to escape Frost is that he binds her hands and feet to the, he to the bedposts so that she's a spread eagle. So at some point in the beginning of when they first met, 
was going to say the beginning of their relationship, but they're still in the beginning of their relationship. When they first met, she called him an abominable snowman. Mm -hmm. But all he heard was snowman, really. Uh, And he has some feelings about that. So he manifests a snowman in the bedroom. (laughs) Is this what I look like to you? Yeah. Um, it's just like it's fr- it's Frosty the Snowman, like this friendly, happy-looking little snowman with a carrot nose in the room with him. He removes the carrot. Oh boy! And he fucks her with a carrot. Yeah, yeah. So that <laughs> I I did not. I was I was blindsided by this fucking oh, no. carrot. Oh no! I mean, I again, we've done thirty-five episodes of this show. If anything, if it, it, it's it's Chekhov's carrot. It is Chekhov's carrot, isn't you, it? It's it's Chekhov's phallic. Thing. If you introduce something phallic in one of these books, I assume that somebody's getting it stuck in them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair. Valid. I don't know why you didn't see that coming. I did it. Well, because it was like it was like two paragraphs. It was like he manifested a snowman and then he fucked her with the, the carrot. Like it just came out of nowhere. <laughs> I was not expecting it. That's all. I just wasn't expecting a woman to get hey. railed by a root vegetable. Hey, l- listen. We all have our blind spots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, even in even in the things that we we deeply love, yeah. sometimes there are blind spots. Um, I like you know like for example, we I like weirdo funk music, and I only just this week discovered Thumpasaurus. Yeah. Uh, so which is very weirdo funk. How did I not see that? Don't know. Don't know. There you go. Don't know. But yeah, so he fucks her with the carrot, and like while he's doing that, his three other hands are doing every other thing Mm. to please and tease her he's got a couple fingers in her mouth he's playing with nipples he's grabbing hair when she finally comes on a carrot (laughs) she comes so hard that her whole body seizes up and like when she she bites down on his fingers she draws blood like so she came Mm. really really hard i guess is what i'm just making a little mouth with my hand right now for some reason and he is so he's so aroused by all of this but the that he almost comes down his own leg like, mm-hmm. I guess, well, it wouldn't down anywhere because he's erect. Yeah, yeah for at least <laughs> straightforward. At, at minimum. Yeah. 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 It, directly onto the bed or something. But he maintains because he never wants to come anywhere but inside of her ever again. I mean, all, right. all right. A noble goal, sir. Yeah. He is completely obsessed with her, with her warmth, with her humor, with her feistiness. With her willingness to sleep with a her f- willingness frost to man sleep with him very, immediately. Yeah, within like two minutes of yep. knowing him. And because nothing is in his domain is warm, he wishes that he could feel the warmth of the scun- the scun- the sun on his face, but he can't because he can't leave this realm without a willing vessel. We'll get into that later. Okay. Um, so when he pulls the carrot out of her, he licks the tip and then he bites it off. And I was like, "Was the carrot comically large too?" I don't think so. I think it was a pretty standard sized carrot. Okay. But I was just like, "Why? Why are we biting off dickheads now?" Because that's what the if yeah. This I is mean, a phallic that's, that's, object. You're biting yeah. the head of the dick off. Did he? What are we doing here, Jack? Did he or say, Mister Frost? Did he say, "What's up, Doc?" After he after did not. Oh. <gasps> I wish he would have missed opportunity. Such a missed opportunity. He has Um, no concept of Bugs Bunny. No, he really doesn't. He really doesn't. And then he and then he says that her cunt is the only flavor he ever wants to taste for the rest of his life. Mayhaps mixed with carrot, though, because he did just eat a carrot. Look, man. (laughs) You ever heard vagina vinaigrette on a carrot? It's so good. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. I broke my husband. Give him a minute. So the thing is, <coughs> I had like a whole bit. Oh, did you? I said like a whole bit lined up. Oh. And I was just ready to unleash it. <laughs> and then you dropped vagina vinaigrette <laughs> all over it. And now it's broken. Oh. The bit is broken. You can still do the bit. Uh, no, I honestly you? forgot what the okay, bit was good. because it was that funny. Okay. So this is this is more of that thing you talk about all the time where you where you think you're going to be funny and then I just top it. Yeah. 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 Oh, right. Exactly. <laughs> no, I I, I, I was going to say this, I, I, I was going to say something along the lines of like you might think that you only want to taste that one thing for the rest of your life. But as somebody uh, who hyper fixates on a lot of things, including food, and I get into like food patterns. No, even I don't want to do that. Uh. <laughs> you do want to change it up a bit. Yeah. Every now and again. Um. None of that would have, no matter how hard I tried, none of that would have been funnier than vagina vinaigrette. So well done. Oh, thanks. 
I'm so glad. I'm so glad I did so good. Okay. So he then has her turn over to grab onto the headboard Mm. so he can fuck her from behind. His brain is completely reeling. Like he wants, he wants her so bad. He can barely form a thought at this point. Been there. Um, And he wants to give every part of himself to her. He wants to have every part of her and he wants to give every part of himself. So, okay. I'm cool. I'm cool (laughs) with wanting every part of her. If you're also going to give every part of yourself. Well, right now he's just giving her one part, but, (laughs) (laughs) But he can't keep her here. And he knows that he can't keep her here. So he's just going to enjoy the time that he has with her for now. This section is titled, The Perks of Having Four Hands. (laughs) Oh, boy. Three fingers are in her mouth. Two fingers are in her ass. One palm is collared around the front of her throat. And the last fist is buried deep in her hair. So many hands. (laughs) So many places to put them. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to like, I'm like. I'm trying to do the math and make sure that 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 all 20 fingers are accounted for. (laughs) But uh, I'm just going to I'm not going to overthink this. Oh, yeah. Don't overthink it. Just just know everybody's having a good time and there are four hands involved. I could just imagine that one pedantic asshole, right? Dear Violet, in the scene (laughs) where he you only accounted for 18 fingers. Where were the other two? Where 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 were the other other two? two? Not believable. XO, XO, big fan. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> yeah, that would be a dude thing. It would thing be a dude do. thing. That would. It would be a dude thing. So after they finish having all of this incredible sex, she asks to see his kingdom. So he magics her this pretty silvery dress made out of ice and he takes her to the castle grounds so that he can show her the garden. The garden is made entirely of plants which died in like freak frosts or freak freezes. So like a bunch of your mom's plants are there. (laughs) Some of your plants are there. Oh, so many of my plants are there. (laughs) But they are the ones that were in that they were at their their peak of beauty when they froze oh so maybe some of my plants are there i believe my pan- my plants are beautiful <laughs> but i don't know if they're beautiful enough to be in his kingdom or whatever yeah. she goes to eat a persimmon from a tree but he stops her he says that she can't eat anything here or she won't be able to go back home at least not the way that she came because <laughs> Sorry, I'm just imagining some comical, like, if you don't eat anything, you can just go right back up through the pool. But if you eat something, we have to shoot you from an ice cannon. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. You have to you have to ride this frozen water buffalo <laughs> through six days of tundra. And the whole time. And then you have to climb a bunch of stairs. The whole time he is uh, doing that bit. From one of the Madagascar movies, the uh, polka dot afro. He's just doing the da, 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 circus, yep. that one. Yep. He's just doing that for six days. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Yeah. Still okay. hungry? No. No. Okay. No. Just checking. That sounds awful. Yeah. I don't want to eat ever again thinking about that. <laughs> so she asks him, why Why is that a problem then? Like, if I have, if I stay here, why is that a problem? And he says, because time moves slower here, but it's still moving in the real world and she's still in the pool. And if she stays here too long, she's going to drown Oh boy! and then she'll die. And then she'll be one of the wandering dead and the wandering dead don't have any feelings. They don't learn. They don't think they don't feel they just wander. Mm. So it wouldn't be the same yeah. if she stayed here and then died and fucked off as a, you know, shade or whatever he tells her then that he can't leave at all without a male for some reason it has to be male human vessel who is strong enough to house his spirit or whatever Mm -hmm. Uh, but before she can consider anything else about that she is pulled out of the pool by jack and wakes up in the real world the avalanche is still happening they are doomed there is no way to escape so she grabs jack she kisses him. She tells him that she loves him. And then she pushes him full force into that pool. Okay. So now see, now she loves him. That sounds committee. It does sound committee, but it wasn't committee before. Okay. Fair. You know, but I saying? see where this is going. Yeah. So she pushes him into the pool and then she goes to dive in with him. But as soon as he got, as soon as he went through, it froze over. So she just knocks her noggin oh. on a frozen pool and she is trapped. She has no way of escaping. The avalanche is already coming. She can see it coming through the ice cave. It hits her, and then she is thrown 
tumbling through the snow. Her body is crushed and broken. She drowns on the snow, and then... Jesus Christ. I know. I know. It's brief, but it is brutal. Um, She is briefly aware of the sensation of open air on her face again, and a pair of blue eyes looking at her, and a voice saying, I'm here, Mara. I've got you, before everything fades to black. Mm -hmm. When she wakes up again, she is being fed a persimmon, and she opens her eyes to see Frost. He apologizes for not knowing that the pool would freeze over <laughs> he's like i'm so sorry <laughs> i never would have. i'm always down here i, I don't know, know. <laughs> nobody's ever nobody's ever gone through the pool before yeah. and now <laughs> you know i didn't know um but he managed to get to her at the very last second he used his magic to heal her body she is alive and she has been sleeping for three days healing up he gives her kind of a hard time about like being so e- like so ready to just sacrifice Jack. She just pushed him into the pool and she gets really mad and she says that she loved Jack and she will mourn him for the rest of her life because she assumes that he died mm. as part of this process. But suddenly there is a fifth hand on her neck and she turns around and she finds that the jack is alive mm-hmm. he's just been hanging out here wait a fifth hand uh, well because she sees the f- okay. frost has four hands I on her saying. currently and then a fifth hand it's just a weird way to put that back. <laughs> yeah it's how they put it in the book oh, so okay i just put it like that uh, so frost explains that jack needs to be alive in order for him to be a vessel and originally he was just gonna like keep he was like, oh, well i was just gonna put him in the dungeon and like get him out when i needed him but after talking for a while, they discovered that they have a lot in common. Chiefly, they are both in love with Mara. I love. It's like the nega Scott at the end of Scott Seriously. Pilgrim. Seriously, yeah, oh, he's gonna, a great guy. We're gonna, gonna go get, get pancakes. We're gonna go get bananas foster pancakes next week. <laughs> Chiefly, among the, the things they have in common, they are both in love with Mara, and she can have both of them. Q threesome. Yep, I was just gonna say. Absolutely. So. Frost eats Mara out until she comes, and then he turns her over so that she can suck Jack's dick while he fucks her from behind. After her next orgasm, she climbs up on top of Jack and rides Jack. And while she's ri- while she rides him, quote, she is filled, stroked, pinched, and choked by Frost's forearms. <laughs> right? Whoa. Yes. That's that 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 that's technically a foursome, I think. At I that think point, so if yeah. You've got, if you've got enough hands. There are eight. Okay, there are three people in this room and eight, eight hands. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I think that's technically a foursome. There you go. You're in an orgy now. Yeah. Yep. So, and then Frost bites her with his fangs. There's no particular reason for it. He just does. And then she comes, and then Jack comes, and then they're all coming, and it's a fantastic, wonderful time, and they're all done. They curl up. They're fucked out. They're completely spent. Mm-hmm. The end. There is an epilogue. Of course, there's always an epilogue. There's always an epilogue. I would be more surprised if there wasn't. Six months later, Mara is taking Frost topside for his first human Christmas experience. Aww. Yeah. And he's like, I don't see the point in this. And she's like, you will shut up. You're going to love it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They go to the pool and they go through it. While they are above, Jack's conscious mind is not present. He basically kind of disappears, and Frost is inside of his body. Okay. So when they're topside, it's Jack's body with Frost's mind. Mm -hmm. The only difference between Jack in his own body and Frost in Jack's body is that the 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 Frost Jack has blue eyes, whereas regular Jack has brown eyes. Okay. But that's about it. They go through the pool. Frost asks what she will say if they run in, into anyone that she knows in town. And she says that she will tell them the truth. That he is Jack Frost, the love of her life. The end. That and was they delightful. they all lived hornily ever after, eternally fucking in a kingdom of ice and snow. I especially... It, for 65 pages it felt like there was a very deep i'm yes like a very deep lore yes to all of it yeah and that was great it was it was like it was so perfectly packed in there there yeah. was no wasted energy yeah it was t- it was a lean it was a lean 65 yes. but it was there was a lot of meat on that lean bones yes a lot of a lot of meat on them lean bones it was absolutely or it whatever. was great it made me it made me think of um did, did you ever, not that it's anything like this, and I would never compare Violet Taylor to Ayn Rand, but did you ever read um, Anthem? Yeah. The really yeah, short one? Yeah, every, I think everybody had everybody to read has, Anthem in high yeah. school. So did you have the version where the original text was in the back with all the crossouts? Yes. All the stuff that she cut? Yes. It made me think of that. 
like, oh, she went through and just crossed out everything that wasn't important until we got just yeah. dense, perfectly dense 65 pages of story. Just a, 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 a scattering of darlings she killed in the back of the yep. book. Yep, exactly. But it was great. So it was so, like I said, uh, this perfect little package, 65 pages, lovely story, beautiful love story, like four sex scenes. And it it was fast, obviously, because we only have 65 pages, but none of it felt wrong, you know? Yeah. It was so good. Such a good book and a perfect way to usher in the colder weather in Michigan by reading a book about a woman in, in love with the demon of ice. So good. Lovely. It was delightful. It was delightful. And thank you again to listener Katie for recommending Violet Taylor to me. I really, really enjoyed this book. I did too. I mean, yeah. I, I, I enjoy, I enjoy hearing you tell me all of them. You know, even if, even if the premise of the book is like wild and outrageous or really fucking dark, like till death do us part. I always love uh, something about them. Um, and in this case, it was the, like I said, the the world building in such a, yeah. a tight, yeah. compact uh, package. I was very into it. But now I must ask, mm. what are you into? That's a good question. I didn't really think about this. I was just going to, I was just going to wing it. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you go first. Well, this week I am into a video game that I am revisiting from 2019. I played it when it came out. Uh, and then walked away from it and came back to it uh, recently, and it has gotten its hooks into me way more than it did last time, and that is Control. Mm-hmm. Uh, Remedy Games, they did Quantum Break, they did Alan Wake, the Alan Wake sequel that just came out, and then Control is all part of, apparently they have this thing called the Remedy Connected Universe. Ooh, I love an interconnected universe. I do, I, I, I do as well. Just like and- Ruby Dixon. There you go. Control centers around a character named Jesse Faden. She is looking for her brother Dylan Faden, who disappeared 17 years ago after uh, an altered world event, or AWE, took place in their hometown of Ordinary. They found a slide projector, and the slide projector opened doors into other worlds, and they came and took Jesse, or excuse me, took Dylan because he, they believed he was going to be a prime candidate to take over the Federal Bureau of Control. It's basically a game, if you're familiar with the concept of SCP, Secure, Contain, Protect. You know, there's weird objects that have power. There is a uh, a carousel horse that uh, just launches itself around the room, that sort of thing. I had to cleanse uh, the evil from a television there's a refrigerator that'll kill you if you stop looking yep, at it. Yeah, there's a refrigerator that'll kill you if you stop looking at it. That I'm, I'm actually helping that guy right now. So oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm helping that guy out finally. But it, the, it's just, it is so fucking good. And I just decided I needed to uh, play something that wasn't MLB The Show. And I'm trying to actually play games that have a finite ending. And if you're out there and you're listening, it's on virtually every platform. It, it's even on the Amazon Luna, I think it was called. Um, I'm playing it on PlayStation. It's uh, part of the PlayStation Plus package. You can play it for, you know, quote-unquote, free if you're a subscriber to PlayStation Plus. I highly recommend it. It's a fantastic game. The story, it, the, the world building around it is all fantastic. The action, the gameplay, the gunplay, it's all third person, over the shoulder. I can't say enough good things about it. I could talk about it all night, but I won't, and I hope I've given you enough time to think about what you're into. Yes, you have. So... Since you're talking about video games, I'm going to talk about video games too. I am into Vampire Survivor. Oh yeah! It's Fuck such a good up. game. It's so good. So I don't normally play anything that requires more than two brain cells, right? I love cozy games. I love games that I can just sort of zone out and like plant a farm or like do a fetch quest. So Vampire Survivors is like the best version of the two brain cell game. You need one finger. Yeah, you you need your left thumb and you could you could actually play the entire game with your left. I was I was we were talking to Rob yesterday at yeah. the wedding. You could take your left thumb off the stick and, and then, then move it over to the it, button. Yep, go push the, the yep. A button and then go back. It's so much fun. So you just you start out with a little character, the character can do one attack and then you kill bad guys that come at you and you collect XP. There's an important point that you were missing there and that is it's the character auto fires. Oh you, yeah, you don't, you don't even have, have to, to fire. Anything. Yeah. You just, whatever direction you're facing, your 
attack will go in that direction yep. unless you have an attack that goes in, in multiple yeah, directions. Yeah, if you have a radio, like, a, like an a AOE a yeah. area of effect. Yeah. You just point in the direction that you want to shoot and you can just like turn in circles yep. and just shoot in circles. And you collect these little blue gems that are the XP. And you get enough XP, you can get more weapons, you can get shields, you can get defensive items, you can get like... I really like that b the blackbird that, oh, yeah, that yeah. flies around you and fires like little crystals at people. It it's nuts, and eventually you get to the point where like your entire screen is covered in a million zombies all coming right at you, and you're barely hanging on, and you're just trying to make it to thirty minutes. Yep, I have never made it to thirty minutes in my game. Mm -hmm. I have made it to thirty minutes when I'm playing with my son. With on, our son. On, on my file? On your file. Oh, okay. Because you have all the stuff unlocked. Right. But I mostly just really love love it for how, e how easy it is, how fun it is to play, and how much I enjoy playing it with my child mm -hmm. because he can play it and he doesn't really have to understand. It. Our, our, our son is a gamer. Like, yep. he loves to game, but this game is so easy for him to pick up and play with me and both of us have a good time. Yep. You know? It's just, it's just so good, and, and it fits into and the. It costs like five bucks. That's what I was gonna say. It, I got it in early access almost two years ago, uh, on the PC because that because my my laptop could run it. That's how like it is very low fi low res. Oh yeah, it's uh, like eight bit. Or yeah, it looks or it looks eight bit, bit. and uh, yeah, sixteen bit would be more the more the appropriate one. Thank you for the correction there. God, I can't believe I dropped the ball on that. Oh yeah, but how hot is it that your wife was like, no, no, it's sixteen. It was super hot. <laughs> It was super hot. I'm gonna push up on you after the record. It's gonna be great. Um, you're gonna say no, but that's fine. Yeah. But anyway, it's 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 a fantastic game, and it fits right into the the concept of this show, like you said, because it's only five dollars, and you can get it on Android, iOS. It's on Xbox uh, Game Pass, so you can play it if you have Game Pass, or if your your partner has Game Pass, or a friend has it. Yep. Um, it's on the Nintendo Switch, yep. which is where we play it. There are two DLC packs, but I think you can get both DLC packs and the base game for less than ten bucks. I got all of it all together, and it was ten dollars. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So I I can't I can't say enough good things about. It. I got it on the PC, and then I was in my hotel room a lot last year when I was in DC for that big conference, and had a lot of time to kill. And you will kill a lot of time, and then all of a sudden you'll go, "Holy shit, where did it all go?" Yeah. This is such a great game. Yeah. I can't say enough good things about it, and I'm so glad that you mentioned it. It's a blast. It's an absolute blast. And I'm going to go play some after we're done here. I think I'm going to go sit in my chair and I'm going to play some Vampire Survivors. <laughs> I'm going to play some Control. Hell yeah. You got anything else? Mm -hmm. You do the closing spiel. I'm going to try and remember what book we're doing next week. You got it. Oh, wait, no. I know what book we're doing next week. Next week. I usually ask you after I do yeah, the spiel. Okay, you do the thing. <clears throat> You can find us on social media. We are on Instagram and TikTok at Cheap Smut. If you would like to send us an email, I strongly encourage you to do so. Cheap Smut Pod at gmail.com if you followed us on tiktok you would already know this but we now have a discord yes. uh, i don't know the discord link off the top of my head but i will put it in the show notes if you would like to come and join the discord and chat with uh with katie and myself and and other listeners uh it's still in the very early we're calling it the beta phase we're still figuring out what channels and everything that we want to have uh and that sort of thing so you know give us time we'll work it out make suggestions the music that you hear in this and every episode is called nostalgia by makai beats you can find this song and thousands of others for you to use free of charge at the free music archive free music archive.org what are we reading next week next week we are reading gentlemen prefer villains the second ah. book in the villainous thing series by c rochelle and we will have returning special guest josh fecketty to do more incredible jokes and commentary because he needs to be involved he wants to know the whole story too oh god i can't wait it's gonna be so much fun i'm so excited me too i've, I've been waiting to read this book since since we had our C. Rochelle interview and she was, I was I was expecting to read it in January, but I had to move it up because she made me hyped. Totally. Send us home, baby. Listener, if there is a book in you, write it. And if there's fucking in it, I'll read it. And then she'll come on this show and explain it to me for your entertainment. Now have a good night. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.